On the eve of the 75th anniversary of V-Day, the tragic news came through that Battle of Britain veteran Terry Clark had passed away. Terry, one of the few, certainly played his part in ensuring victory in Europe and he kindly agreed to be part of my uh, Five of the Few book. Uh, in preparing for a presentation, we'd recorded over the phone myself reading one of Terry's combat reports, with Terry giving his personal reflection. So this relates to the combats of 16th, 17th of April 1941, when Terry was flying in a 219 Squadron Bowfighter with Wing Commander Pike. Wing Commander Pike's combat report. I took off from Tangmere at 0020 hours in Bowfighter R2253 with Sergeant Clark as AI operator. After a short time, I was handing to Durrington and chased an enemy aircraft on a northerly vector. No contact or AI or visual was made. I was then returned to the coast and vectored onto another enemy aircraft. This time, AI contact was quickly made. I immediately saw a blip on my tubes and gave Wing Commander Pike the much wanted word, contact. The enemy aircraft was about two miles ahead of us and at the height of 17,000 feet. I think they must have either seen us or possibly a backward looking radar was on. He took violent action. AI contact was maintained by Sergeant Clark in spite of three 90 degree turns by the enemy. Hard starboard I called out and keep turning. Steady the turn now, he is ahead of us. Hard starboard again, I think the bugger knows we're after him. Keep turning and maintain height. Here's your turn now, we are getting close. Hey, he's on starboard again. Hard turn. Now he's up. That's it. He's ahead of you now. You should be able to see him. Finally, the enemy was closed to minimum range and was sighted by means of two exhaust flames at about 500 yards range and 300 feet above. Range was closed to about 200 yards and a one second burst from four cannon and four MG guns set the enemy on fire. The burst made the enemy aircraft cough a bit and indeed set the aircraft on fire. We followed him down and for several thousand feet and then he took a vertical dive, struck the ground and exploded with a shower of centuries. I felt like a child with a new toy. I had at last proved myself and with the CO. For some reason I suddenly felt a little sad. How many people had we killed? Back in Germany, a wife or a mother would be grieving over their loss. Did I come into this world to kill people? Sadness went when I realised that it might have been us in that situation. All is fair in love and war, they say. I had yet to learn about love. With both of us feeling quite pleased with ourselves, we returned to take their control, and whilst we were on a homing vector, we noticed a few bombs explode nearby. We turned towards the line of bombs and I flashed my weapon, the code for switching on the AI. AI contact was obtained almost immediately at 1,500 yards range. Tangmere asked if any friendly aircraft were nearby. One, said Tangmere, and we had told him to move away. I still had contact so the hunt was on again. Once again, the enemy started to take evasive action. It seemed to me that it was like attacking a cat chasing a mouse, and I was bloody certain that this mouse was not going to get away. Contact was maintained, and we were slowly creeping up on him. He went off again to starboard. Not quick enough, I had my beady eye on him, and a quick call to Tom Pike, and we were back behind him again. Then a sudden call from Tom. I can see him. It's a high call 111. The moon had risen, and there he was, about 300 yards away. Two exhaust flames, one under each wing, were then seen, and range was closed to 250 to 300 yards. A four-second burst was given at this range, and enemy exploded in the air. Burning fragments blew back and hit the bowfighter. A moment later, I saw two parachutes in the air. Well, at least they were alive and would become prisoners of war. We watched the aircraft until it struck the ground. Enemy number two to our credit, and I was beginning to feel a little cocky. Tom Pike decided that we had done our share, and we set course for Tangmere. However, fog had set in, and we were diverted to Middle Wallop, landing at about 0300 hours. 
We had been in the air for two hours, 40 minutes. I hoped that I had proved my worth with the CO. I had satisfied myself. <laughs>